Hi everyone, in this video we are going to create a pinch pot vase similar to this one and then we're actually going to carve it out and at the end you'll see the carved out version. So you will need um, some slip, a gift card, you, this is my scoring tool that we made in class. We also made these carving tools in class and um, a paddle and then of course you'll need some clay and a canvas mat. So I'm going to get this all set out here and we're going to get going. Alright so I have my clay. I have kind of two equal balls of clay and then I have some extra. You can just start with two equal balls of clay and you're going to make two pinch pots um, and put them together like we did in the last project and if you haven't seen that video that is on YouTube and in Canvas. Um, one thing about making uh, anything with clay is you need to um, wedge it and wedging just means that you want to take all of the air from the inside out. So as I am doing it I'm just kind of doing it pushing it down like this kind of getting the air out of the inside. Kind of pushing the clay into itself. Okay, so make sure you're wedging your clay. So I'm going to make two pinch pots here and then we're going to get started. Okay, so I'm going to slip and score them together and I just wanted to say when you're making your two pinch pots, you don't want them very thin, the walls very thin because we are actually going to be carving. So we want a, a thicker pinch pot even though I've been trying to um, train you to do thinner pinch pots, now we're, we have a use for thicker pinch pots. The other thing I'm noticing in my classes is that you guys are not scoring enough. Okay? So you really want to roughen up that edge. It's just a little reminder. And like we did in the previous project, we are going to add some slip. I'm just going to stir up my slip a little bit, incorporate some of the water. And the trick when doing this so that you don't um, get a weak seam here is to really match them up before you really attach. So make sure they're all nice and matched and then take some pressure and squeeze this way. So I'm going to squeeze together, kind of pushing down or pushing up depending on which one's a little bit bigger. And as I do that, some of the slip is coming out of the seam. I'm just going to wipe that off. Too much slip is harder to work with. So just kind of wiping off some of that slip. And then again, I'm going to be trying to blend the seam. And so when you're blending the seam, you don't necessarily, um, you're, you're not worried about it looking beautiful as much as you actually want to take the clay from one side to the other side. And then after you do a little part right here, it helps if your finger is clean, go across the other way. So kind of an X one way and then an X the other way. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm going to start tapping with my hand to make the shape that I want. I have pretty much a sphere here. I have some cracks, but they're um, easy to blend in. And so I have a sphere, but I want to make um, more of a vase shape. And so I have my vase here to show you guys my example. Um, this top part here, the lip and the neck here, we're going to add this part on in a minute. So really we're just talking about from the neck down. So I want it to kind of be um, coming in at the bottom towards the foot and have kind of a bigger bump at the top here. So I'm going to take my paddle I'm going to start paddling. It's one of the important things about paddling is holding it in your hand. Okay, we don't want to paddle it on our canvas. Okay, and if you already see a natural place where it kind of comes together like that, you can um, use that to your advantage. And I'm going to make sure my paddle is clean so there's no rough spots. Um, I'm going to start shaping with my paddle and I can just hit it like this or if I, I hit it in a direction then I can really move the clay so if I want my clay to go from here to go up higher I can move kind of hitting it as I go and you can see it's building up a ridge right here so then I'm just going to turn it and these little bits we can just clean off so I'm going to keep doing that all the way around Okay, now I'm going to paddle downwards because I want this part to be the foot. So I'm going to paddle down. And already you can start to see my shape has started to change. The form has um, changed a lot from a sphere. Okay, and I can start resting just a tiny bit. We really don't want to bang too much on the table. Okay, if anything I can turn it upside down and paddle a little like that. I can paddle around the bottom. At this point, I'm not worried about these paddle marks. Not a problem. I want to try also when I'm working on the bottom to make sure it's not tipping one direction or another. Okay, so it has a very nice shape going down here. Up here, I'm just going to smooth this out. I like this part here. It works really well for a shoulder. Now, I did that really fast. It might take you a little bit more time. You might have to restart a couple of times. And that's okay. Remember, we can restart. Okay, I think I'm ready for my next step. So I'm going to put this over to the side. I'm going to take some more clay, give it a little wedge. It's smaller amount of clay. And this time we are going to create this part here. And once we create it, then we can slip and score it to this vase here. So you can see this part here is this part here. Now we're going to work on this part up here. So 
this time when I pinch it through or pinch it, I'm going to put my thumb all the way through and make a little hole there. Okay, the part that you put in, the top part here, this is going to be the lip. So first we're going to pinch down at the bottom like we always do. Pinching and turning. I have a large crack here. I can even just take my skewer and kind of move the clay and then smooth it over with my fingers. So I'm wanting it to come down this way so it, when it hits the vessel, then I have room for the neck. Kind of making that neck area. This will be the lip up here. pretty good. Down here at the neck here, I'm going to flare out just a tiny bit. It's kind of tearing there, that's okay. Okay, this part is now going to be attached to this part. Okay, so it looks like this right now. I'm noticing this is a little uneven. Let me fix that real quick. And I want to elongate it more. So I'm trying to make the body perfect, as perfect as I can before I start to add the top part. So if you don't like it, before you move on, you make it the way you like it. Now I'm ready to add the top part here. So what I'm going to do is with my skewer, I've lost my skewer, here it is. I'm going to mark on the inside and the outside where they're going to meet. Just making a little mark on the inside and then around the outside, making a little mark. Now I know I'm going to slip and score inside that area. I'm attaching it here. And I'm going to put pressure. And I'm going to do blending. So I'm going to hold it in one hand. I'm going to blend down and under. And again, this is structural. This is helping them attach. I'm not too worried about beauty yet. We're just worried about function. Mine is starting to cave in, so that's why I keep putting my finger back in there. If you want, you can keep one finger in there while the other finger is on the outside. Or you could take the end of your popsicle stick sometimes I like to use the side of my popsicle stick as a blender. I'm going around a second time and making sure that these are really connected. Now the inside isn't open yet, and so we're going to open it in a minute. However, I need to get a little more clay and put kind of a coil around 
this part here because it's so thin. This is an optional step that you may or may not need to do. So let me go get a coil, some clay for a coil. All right, so I have some clay here. I'm going to make a coil, kind of like you did when you were playing with Play-Doh. Okay, I don't want it too fat of a coil because I'm going to want that neck and that shoulder part. So I'm going to roll it out. That's pretty good. And I'm going to score the coil on just like I would anything. I need to make sure that I'm scoring and slipping. Fits. Ooh, a little short. I can do that. Okay. Add some slip. Put my coil in there. Make sure that I'm pressing from the inside. Okay, now it's quite wet. And if yours is this wet, it would be a good thing if you got your hands clean before you blend it again or your tool. So you can just like wipe your tool off and then you can hold this in your hands and you can blend up and you can blend down. Okay, I got my coil blended. It's not beautiful, but it's structural, and that is the most important part. We're going to work on beauty in a little bit, okay? All right, so I'm making sure that it can stand on its foot, and the foot is tapered down. The other foot is tapered down. So yours should look something like this. Okay. The top is all wonky. We're going to fix that in a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to go around with a clean, dry, cleanish, dry finger and make sure that I get all of the lines smoothed out from blending. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blend on the inside as best I can. So you kind of have a bird's eye view here, just making sure that that's all blended inside there. I still don't have a hole in here. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my gift card and I'm going to rib um, any marks that I see, okay? And so I'm going to take it, I'm going to take it, and I, might, I like to bend mine a little bit, kind of bend it within my hand because it's a little bit flexible. And this really gets it nice and smooth. If I get some clay, like I'm getting up here, and it's getting on my card, I can just wipe it off. I can also go this way. This also compresses the clay, 
and that is important because um, it'll make the clay stronger when it's compressed. So not only going down, but going sideways across. And I can get a lot out a lot of the big bumps this way too. And you can see I'm getting some clay. That's okay. So it's a little bit of shaping, compressing, and smoothing all in the same. So I worked on that spot for a while. And then I'm gonna go to the next spot. I'm gonna go down. and then go across. Go to the next spot, go down. You get the idea. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth out with my hands. So make sure your hands are kind of wiped off of any extra clay. They should not be wet. And I'm going to just smooth out any of those mar marks that that tool made. Smooth out the tool marks. So lots of time is spent smoothing. I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rib and I'm going to go up this side um, of the outside of the um, the neck and the lip and rib it with my card. I have a little repair I have to make, so I'm just going to make that repair here. It's just with a coil. And as I'm doing this, I'm constantly holding the neck area, just like when you'd hold like a little infant. You don't want that neck to just drop. It might break off at this point. It's so wet. Okay, so again, I can go around now with a clean ish finger and smooth out any tool marks that I have. Okay, I am ready to cut the hole. So I am going to, you can take your skewer, go around the inside here, might drop in, it might come out. I'm trying to get it out. Here we go. Oop. Here we go. And now I want to reach my finger all the way down in there and smooth as much as I can to blend. And this might be a good time to stand up. also might be a time where you have to do some repairs if it's a little too thin anywhere. Okay, so I'm done with the forming of my vase and now I need it to stiffen up and so I need it to stay out for about a whole class period so if the class period is done I'm gonna wrap it up in plastic and next class period I'm gonna open it up and just let it sit on my table 
in the open air for an entire class period and get a little bit harder. I'll wrap it up at the end of that class period and then the next class period is when I'll do the next step. Okay, so you want it out for about an hour. Um, and during that time, you can do another project. You can take notes. Miss O will give you some information on what to do. So this needs to sit for an entire hour and get to a soft leather hard state for us to do the next step. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here and that'll be your cue to um, let it sit. And then in the next video, we'll take it on and finish up the piece. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.